Welcome to The Good Life. Thank you for stopping by. I'm Patrick Harney. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe, comment, share, hit the notification button so you can be alerted when a new episode comes out. And got a good episode for you today. I have a friend of mine um, who is a very talented actress by the name of Callie Bustle. And uh, we'll be diving into some of her projects that she's been a part of and um and also just like life life experiences and tell some funny stories and um i don't know a little bit of everything so enjoy and we are live callie bustle welcome it's so great to see you it's so good to see you too it has indeed been a minute yeah yeah because well because we were i mean we worked together in project horror but we were never there on the same day because you were there the second day I, I was there on the first day yeah, you and Bobby and Spring were just slaying all the first, the the previous, or not previous, current time stuff. I was the flashbacks. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Well, and I wasn't doing, I, that was Bobby and Spring. I was just sitting there just going until the very end. Yeah, but that's a, a vital role. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The clicks, the clicks of the laptop is the is the most important uh, <laughs> small detail, you know, that that you need. But, um, yeah. but yeah. So, and then before that, we uh, I because I met you on Electron Blade. Yeah. Back in the that day. Twenty sixteen. It would have been. I cannot was... believe that that is almost six full years now. Wow. Because you were so one of the first people. Ago. Yeah, you were one of the first people that auditioned for us in October. I specifically remember it. And then you were not able to come to either the first auditions or the callbacks because you had scapegoat auditions. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. I, I had my I had my scapegoat callback um, the same day as the as the callback for um, or no, was it the first audition for Electron Blade? Yeah, that- or maybe you had like a, a table read or something well because i remember i auditioned for kai Mm -hmm. and then i think i think that was all i auditioned for and i want to say i'm i think i had filming i think it was a pickups for scapegoat was that was and, and that was the reason that i couldn't go to the callback and then and then afterward i remember being super bummed though because i was like i really want to be a part of this (laughs) <laughs> like, I, I hope they don't kick me to the curb. And then you're like, well, what about Cinderkiss? And so you told me a little bit about Cinderkiss. And I, I kind of like we kind of created that character on how he would be. And um, and oh, man, that was that still to this day. That's one of my favorite characters that I've ever played. I'm going to be totally honest with you and not kissing ass or anything, but Cinderkiss is one of my favorite characters precisely because of you. Like we were in the unique position to be able to create characters for the actors we wanted to work with. Um, and you were like on top of the list. Oh, so well, thank um, you. Yeah. Oh gosh. I'm going to kick the camera here. Um, yeah, but uh, it, it, it is so true. And you and Eli working together uh, to this day is like one of my favorite experiences <laughs> as an artist as just being able to direct you guys and like witness you work together, which to my knowledge, you guys have not previously met one another, right? No. Uh. Uh-uh. Yeah. No. You're just, that's the beauty of acting. Put you two in a room together, two complete strangers. And it was like, oh, actual magic. I just, he, I love that so much. He and I got along really, really well. Um, yeah. Like from the jump, we got along really well, which I was, which I was surprised. Cause like, um, I mean, typically I can get along with, you know, I like, I feel pretty much anybody. I mean, I can, I, I do always do my best to try to find some common ground with anybody. And, um, but with him, it was like the second the conversation started, we were full board, like just throwing jokes out there and just like just like messing around on set and having fun and um yeah yeah that was cool that was a really really cool shoot um yeah yeah. he was I will say too Eli was like a divine find because he was not our first person to play the role of Turgis I had actually like specifically written the role for somebody else who the day before just was like oh I can't do it sorry and so we were like 
okay. Oh my God. And then he had been one of the people that had auditioned for, I don't know if he had auditioned for Turgis or another role. Um, but I just called him and I was like, Hey, are you available? He's like, yep, I'll be there. And thus began my relationship with Eli, who is just the gift that keeps on giving every day. Mm. Um, but yeah, you two together was just chef's mm. kiss. So good. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. And I, and I will say too, I remember, I distinctly remember, um, the massive light that Tommy had outside <laughs> of that barn. It was obnoxiously huge. And that, that was to, that was to simulate, you know, moonlight. But, but I remember, I remember it being so big and I remember looking at him. I was like, this, is this necessary? Like, this is huge. Like this is bigger than a car. And, and I remember him <laughs> setting it up and it was like, a good 25 yards away from the barn because of how powerful this thing was oh man that was funny yeah he would be funny. so elated to hear that that was like something that you remembered because that <laughs> was like that is to this day one of tommy's favorite possessions like yeah. he, just, he was like in love with it <laughs> yeah by the oh, way hey you. tommy craft it's good to see you buddy good to talk to you hello little shout out <laughs> Um, no, but, uh, but yeah, no, that, that was a fun and speaking of, which is interesting how talking about kind of like, you never know where, well, okay. We didn't talk about this, but I'm saying it now you, you never know where, uh, like connections and whoever you meet, you never know where that's going to take you later down the line. Yeah. So Tanya, yeah. um, she was, if, if I remember correctly, doing hair and makeup for that shoot. I met her. Yes. I met her twice. Right. Okay. I met her twice. Very kind. Very nice person. Met her twice. Yeah. And um, Isaiah Barnes for One Reckless Weekend. Yeah. He went when I found out about this project, he messaged me. I had no idea. I, I didn't know anything about this project. He messaged me and said, hey, I was referred to you by a friend of mine to audition for the lead role in this film. And I was like, oh, oh. so I was thinking, I was like, oh, cool, who, who, who is it? And he told me that it was Tanya. And That's I was like, beautiful. I was like, I met her two days back in like 2016, 2017. And she threw me out there for, for this role. It, it, oh. it, it, it's crazy to me because I was like, I mean, she, I, and, and we got along very, very well. I mean, she was very kind and very nice. Oh, um, yeah. But, but again, like it was two days. I was like, how do you even remember me? You know what I mean? Um, yeah. No, Tanya's fantastic like that. She really is. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that was, that was a crazy, like, and, and it's funny because I, I've never really had an instance where, um, where that sort of thing came up where like somebody that I met years ago or met on this project, uh, it kind of helped catapult me to this project, whatever. I, I, I never really had that. Um, but, but yeah, that was, that was a cool, that was a cool moment. And then I got to produce, well, okay. Quote unquote produce. I didn't really do much forever after. And yeah. I remember that shoot one it was really cold but two like i remember how powerful that shoot was and just watching and being able to see your performance and i was like yeah this is going to this this is going to work out really well this this film <laughs> and yeah, it did I it mean, won a crap ton of awards yeah i i think that's like the beauty of jeff cap's writing though um uh, don't I, give um... him that don't give him that <laughs> don't give jeff that Come on. <laughs> okay. Well, hopefully I'm I'm just gonna pretend like he's um not I'm listening kidding, and still say <laughs> still say what I think. I think Jeff is a uh, brilliant creator and he and I have kind of lost touch in the is. last couple of years. Like <laughs> <laughs> okay a, a, he always gives me shit for a, a, everything on his show so i gotta give i gotta give him a little something on mine that's all jeff you know i love you buddy that's, anyway continue that's, fair. that's <laughs> totally fair um but yeah no i think jeff is a really brilliant creator and he always has these like really unique ideas like i i always find that whenever i read his scripts it's always just like there's like little twists they're not mm -hmm. sometimes there's the huge ones that blow your mind but there's always like the little like he makes his characters really interesting and they all have really um they're not like 
too rich where the actor doesn't get to come in and like add their own thing, but they're rich enough to give the actor a good thing to play with. And that's what I've always appreciated about working with Jeff because we've worked with, I've worked with Jeff a couple of times. You and I have worked with Jeff on storage, which mm -hmm. like, oh, RIP, that was so much fun. I oh, would I love to see that finished, but yeah. I would also love to see Electron uh, Blade finish. Apparently there's a, apparently there's a cut of storage somewhere um that that uh i i won't say who but um or wait no i don't even remember who actually i jeff said but there was a cut that was made that jeff wasn't fully happy with oh now there's an earthquake on my side um that, that he wasn't <laughs> fully happy with but he wanted to he maybe wanted to do a cut himself but i don't know whatever happened with it that was a fun shoot too i forgot about that yeah that was i was so sore by the end of it just my arms from like Oh, pounding. pounding, pounding on the, on the, the door. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we had to go uh, like balls to the wall and it was so hot in that storage unit. Jeez. We did but like I, hours, but such as film, you know, <laughs> you just yeah. do the same thing over and over again. We're like, yeah, we love this. You froze your video froze. Oh, oh wait, there we go. Are we back? Am I back? There yeah. we go. All right. We're back. There we go. Um, cool. But yeah, yeah, no, no, Jeff is a great writer. He, he really is. And I think, um, you know, I think he, I think that's kind of the direction he's starting to go into now. I think he's trying to just do more writing. Um, he's yeah. found, he's found a writing partner, Nolan Bryant, who is a group. He's a great writer. He lives in Canada. Um, and they both wrote Locker 42. Right. Uh, which we're still, in the process of trying to get uh get going there's a long story with that but um so i'm producing on that and then gillen williams who is from the uk he's in he's producing on it um nice and we're talking with a production team down in georgia and um and going to be co-producing with alexander kane uh mike donovan um and and we're going to be trying to make this make this a lot bigger than than it was originally going to be. Um, That's awesome. Because I remember, I was going to say, I remember reading the script back in 2019 or whenever he first wrote it. Yeah. And I, I really, really enjoyed that script. I mean, as you know, I mean, you've produced, it's, uh, there's so much that goes into it. So much Absolutely. that goes into it. <laughs> so um, much pre-production. Yeah. And so, even more post-production. But that's yeah. the other half. <laughs> but the, but that's kind of the fun stuff. You know what I mean? Like that's because yeah. then you get to see you put all the footage together and you get to see everything uh, kind of come to life and um, and all the Lego pieces uh, or the puzzle Lego pieces, all the puzzle pieces. What I was trying to say, get put into, uh, you know, to, to make the whole picture. But um, but yeah, so. Crow is coming out. Yeah. This. Fall. Yeah, it's. It's actually supposed to, so they're doing a- Or no, premiere. July. Yeah, they're, we're doing a premiere yeah. in the theater on July 14th, and then it hits YouTube on July 18th. So it's you pretty excited? exciting. It's been, um, yes, I, I am. I'm really excited. I, um, this has been a long time coming because if anybody who's been following Crow, there's been um, like, hiccups after hiccups and I'm not exactly sure what those are we just know that there's been a couple dates announced and then pushed back and so um after we started filming I was able to see like bits and pieces of the cuts that they put together and from what I saw and from the experience that I had on set it just like it was absolutely beautiful mm. footage um and uh Fel Peller who produced it and Tenille um which I loved Tanil. She's amazing, but I cannot quite pronounce her last name and I feel bad for that. I'm sorry. Can psyched. anybody? <laughs> She's wonderful, no, but can anybody pronounce that last name? <laughs> we'll, we'll just go with the <laughs> film chick, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, Phil Peller and Tanil, who produced it um, were just exceptional. And like Peter Poulos is, I've worked with him on a couple things, the DP on the project. Um, it's just phenomenal. There's just like so much good talent that is attached to this project that I think it's going to be really exciting. And the last I heard is that Justin is um, for this premiere that 
we're having, he's using half of the proceeds to pay the theater and the other half to uh, donate to Jim Teichert's funeral, who was um, one of the visual effects artists who passed away recently, um, which I think is really cool. Yeah. Uh, not that he passed away. Please don't let wow. that be misinterpreted. Jeez. Clickbait. Um, oh my God. <laughs> Oh, in this day and age, <laughs> you never know, man. No, um, kidding, I am no, saying no, that no. it is cool of Justin to yeah. donate to his family. That is cool. That is cool. Good on you, Justin. That that is that is really cool to be doing yeah. that. And you know, and also, I mean, that's you know, I I never got to meet him, but um, from what I've heard, he was he was a really really cool guy. So um, yeah, that that is very very cool of you guys to and and of Justin to do that for the for the family. So that's great. Yeah. So what, um, well, for one, you, you kind of, you kind of threw it back out. What, what's, what's hap is electron blade. Is that no more? Cause I, yeah. cause I, cause I recently saw on IMDb that the production status changed of episode. One. Oh, I don't know who would change that. <laughs> okay. Um, All right. so cause I saw that and I was like, oh, maybe, maybe the episode will come up. <laughs> So, um, essentially there's, there's lots to talk about with Electron Blade. Um, and we as don't you have know, to. we don't have, to. no, it's okay. okay. I think it's better to be said than, um, to not be said. Cause I don't think that Tommy and I have really gone on any sort of record to talk about it. Um, other than Tommy making a Facebook status, I think last year mm -hmm. about that he was shutting it down, but essentially we finished production, um, in 2018, at the end of 2018, which was the last day we would have filmed with you and Eli at my house, actually. Yes. Um, so basically there were just like so many life things that happened. Um, and Tommy kind of biting off more than he could chew. Um, he had planned this huge world and we had been rolling things out much faster than we had assets ready. And I mean that assets in the term of like visual effects world. So you filmed with us, you know, just how much of it we did green screen. Yeah. Um, a lot. Yeah. It, the majority of the project was green screen and Tommy is um, easily, he's my best friend and also easily one of the most talented people I have ever met. And I say that like unbiased, he's just like so incredible. Um, but he just was not able to kind of keep up um, creating the content in a way that he needed to, as well as work to survive. Hmm. Um, we kind of ran out of funds, um, which, you know, tends to happen with film. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. And then um, as time progressed, Tommy kept going back and looking at the footage and thinking, man, we could do so much better. And I was going back and seeing my own performance and thinking, well, damn, I could do so much better now. Like as I've been through training and growth as a human being and like looking back on it. And so Tommy kept just putting time, like setting aside time to do it and setting aside time to do it. And it just never happened. It never happened. There was like life issues that happened, mental health issues that happened, funding that happened until finally Tommy was like, okay, I got to call it. Um, and he did. And I, I'm, I don't want to like put all the onus on Tommy. There was literally like, I'm not skilled in post-production. So you're talking about all the fun of post-production just a minute ago. That's like not something that I share. Yeah. I am all pre and on set. And then as soon as we wrap shooting, I'm like, well, I have nothing to do yeah. here. Like I literally, I don't know how to edit. I don't know how to sound. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, essentially, um, we called it and that's not to say that like, I don't know. It's just, it's a story that's like super near and dear to our hearts and all of the actors and all of the crew that were a part of it is just like <sighs> too good to be true. And that's like one of the things that I've learned um, on my own journey as an actor on just like how to treat people on sets, mm -hmm. how to structure a set, how to properly pay people, which is something that I know that Tommy and I both have like, really um regretted not being able to like value people the way that they were worth and it's something that like as we grow older and learn more lessons that just like sits and sits and sits so um yeah i'm kind of saying that now is like it, it doesn't really make it okay but it is kind of sorry did go. i lose you 
No, nope, okay. we're good there. There um, we go. But yeah, it kind of, um, like I said, it doesn't necessarily make it okay, but it is a growing point. And um, I don't know, we both still have dreams of kind of like resurrecting it mm -hmm. and like calling back the people that we've worked with. And, but it's not really an option unless we are able to like truly and deeply pay the people mm -hmm. that have worked with us and um, do it right. So yeah, that was kind of a lot, but that's, it, it is what it is. Have you thought about um, maybe trying to get a like like another production house or another another uh, company involved to to partner with, and you know maybe use the footage that you have, use some of the concept art that you had because I mean it's killer. Like it it's the the visuals that you guys were able to create and that he was able to create are insane, and so especially for one person to do. Yeah. Um, so have you thought about maybe trying to, uh, you know, do it that way and kind of use it as like a proof of concept to maybe, you know, kind of sell the story to, you know, not, not sell the story, but like, as in the property, but sell it to a company that's like, yeah, we want to jump on board and let's help you finish this out and actually make it, you know, the way you want to make it. That might be an option. Yeah. I mean, that's something that we've certainly thought about um, and talked about a lot. We have like um, an EPK with like the breakdown of everything and, and character bios and concepts and like episode breakdowns of how we would work out a season and even multiple seasons after that. It just, um, like I said, it just kind of like hit a roadblock. There were a lot of like um, emotional and like spiritual things around it too like not to be dramatic but you know when you put a lot of effort into something how it just actual fe actually feels like a baby yeah um it, it just kind of like we got to a point where it sort of felt like our baby got sick and died and so we just kind of like mm. mourned it a little bit um but no certainly all of the material is there to do exactly what you've described um and we have it essentially ready I don't want to say ready to sell, but we have enough at this point to be able to do something cool with it. Yeah. It's just finding the right connections, finding the right budget, uh, which Tommy and I are historically um, terrible at. <laughs> <laughs> I think most are. <laughs> right. That's like the hardest thing. Everybody has great ideas. Yeah. Like you talk to anybody, they have a great idea. It's just finding the right people to believe and invest in that idea. Yeah. And then, I don't know, we're both sci-fi people. So you go along and you watch all this sci-fi stuff that literally feels like your idea. I mean, I don't know. Have you ever watched the TV show, The 100? Yes. I've, I've watched some of it, but yes, yes. Literally season six feels like the plot of Electron Blade. So it's like, <laughs> how is this new and original anymore? You know? Yeah. Um, you, you could do an animated series. You could have it be oh, animated. I would love that. To be kind of like an arcane on Netflix. I don't know if you've ever seen that show. Granted, that's yeah. based off of a video game. Um, but that'd be that's sweet. Oh, great idea. <laughs> because then, yeah, because then it, it's a it's one, it's a lot cheaper for and for talent because voiceover is a lot cheaper than it is or than you know, live action stuff. Yeah. Um, but two. Like you don't have to do a bunch of CGI stuff. You just got to animate and you can stylize the hell out of it to be however you want it to be. You know what I mean? Good point. That is a very good point. Ideas to play with. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got options, you know, you got options. Um, well, that's great. Great. Um, yeah. I, I, I hope that I hope that someday something can come of it because it, it was incredibly unique and very, very good um and and i was really uh but i but i do understand that you know everything that was happening you know in your guys's lives at that time like i i totally get why it needed to be set down uh because that's yeah. a huge that's a huge undertaking so uh for you know for one person on the post-production but for two people in total you know that's a huge undertaking so i i 100 understand that for sure yeah um what so I, I do want to know, what do you wish everybody understood about this industry? What is one thing that you <laughs> wish everybody understood about this industry? Oh, God. Um, 
<laughs> you know, we always talk about how hard it is, right? Like you literally are in class sometimes to have um, like a support group. I think that's yeah. like half the benefit <laughs> of training is to have a support group. Yeah. Um, okay. So to answer this question, I'm going to share a quick anecdote. Mm -hmm. But one of my best friends recently, like at the beginning of the year, was looking for another job. And she was applying to like three or four jobs a day, probably 10 a week and hearing nothing back. And she was getting so frustrated to the point of tears. And she was like, they can't even at least like tell me what I did wrong. They can't even tell me why I didn't get it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> like I had, I had no sympathy. Yeah. <laughs> and I had to like walk myself back and think to myself, you know, ah, okay. That's not an experience the rest of the world has. Yeah. Like as an actor, um, having that thick skin is like super vital because the rejection is so fierce. Like just this week, I, or, or I should say last week, last Thursday, I had a call back. And I was the only female called back for one female role. So what does that feel like? Right. That feels like a shoe in, right? They just yep. want to like match you with feels the like, other guy. Yeah. Right. I didn't yeah. book it. What? <clears throat> right. That hurts. So it does. And it's just like, it's, it's thing after thing. And I, I personally, over the last like year, I feel like I've had so many stinking roadblocks, especially with COVID and all of that too. Um, I got, I, I got COVID last September and, um, I had to film a feature film in October and with COVID you continue to test positive or you can up to like three months. Right. Yeah. So I was like over 10 days clear of my quarantine. So not even start of symptoms, like my two week quarantine, mm -hmm. I was 10 days clear with a, with medical clearance and they still fired me because I didn't have a negative PCR. Is oh, that wild? See, I would have told, I would have told him to go to hell. I would have been like, no, I did everything I needed to do. I'm good. Yep. And they, that the, sucks. the director said to me, he was like, yeah, I got talent in from LA and New York. And I just can't tell them that there's somebody positive on tech on set. And I was like, I'm not positive. <laughs> like, well, also, also, also for one that goes against like, you can't, tell other people you can't tell somebody someone else's medical stuff so yep. clearly they have no idea what they're doing so honestly i think you probably dodged a bullet with that yeah i i have feelings about it that i'll just like not um say <laughs> yeah. but um yeah no that sucks so all of that to say like the one thing that i want to that i would want anybody to understand is that it is hard it is so much harder than you think you think it is. Yeah. And also it is so worth it. Yeah. There is nothing more worth it, more rewarding than being able to show up on set and do your job, whether that be as crew, as talent, as post-production, there is like, in my opinion, there's nothing more rewarding. And especially when you're creating your own content. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, Patrick, have you written anything? Or were you part of the I, writing team for Locker 42? Um, I was part of the creative, um, the creative brain to help develop the story. I didn't write it. I wrote, I shouldn't say that. I wrote uh, like two scenes in the script un unofficially. Um, but, but yeah, so I've, I've written, I've actually written, um, I'm two thirds of the way in on a comedy series that I've been writing. Oh, um, right on. And, and I've also, I've written a feature. I've also, um, I've been writing a short, a short film as well. Um, but I don't know. I just, it's one of those things where, you know, I, I gotta, I gotta take that step to like, get it out there in front of people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but but also, you know, I'm, I'm one of those people, too, where I have a hard time with like, like to me, I see like everything that I write, maybe with the exception of the comedy series, I, I see exactly how it's supposed to go, quote unquote, in my head. And so I'm like, how, how could anybody else do this? You know, th that's my thought. But I'm like, but I'm not ready to direct by any means. So, 
Um, so I don't know what the, I, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. The, the, there will be a day where I'll be like, okay, I'm going to like get my head out of my, you know what, I'm going to come off my high horse and like actually get some real, you know, pros in here to take a look at this and go, okay, this should be done this way. This should be written this way and all that. Cause I'm not a pro writer by any means. So, um, but it is fun to write. And, and, and what you said too, you know, it's, uh, the, the thick skin, it's important because, you know, I mean, us as actors, you got to think we probably deal with more rejection in a year than most people do their whole lives. Yes. And so <laughs> I remember, I remember I went on, I, I went on a commercial uh, casting call or, yeah, or I'm, I'm sorry, it, it was a commercial audition for Nestle Toll House. And I was like, whoa, I was like, this is this is some, this is some big money commercial and this is like some yeah. cool stuff. Right. So I had to drive all the way down to Ohio. It was a three and a half hour drive for this audition. I was like, oh, no, I I'm think gonna... I remember also getting this audition. Oh really? Yeah. So I, I, was, like, yeah. I was like, I was like, I was like, nope, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go. And like, this is yeah. it. This, and if, and this will be a story where I, you know, I'll get up like, yeah, I had to drive, you know, seven hours total and you know, there and back and like, get all this, but I did it. I get there and I got there like, 30 minutes early because I really misjudged traffic and time. Right. But I was like, no, I better, better be early than late. Right. So it's at a community center and I go, I, but there was no signs anywhere, nothing. I was like, okay, well, so I walked in, I opened the door and there's steps that go down and the door to the audition room swings open. And there was a few chairs there and there was this girl sitting there in the chair and opens the door and um, the casting agent opens the door and goes, okay, come on in and looks at me and goes, oh, you're here already? Okay, well, here, come on in. I was like, oh, okay. And I, there was no sides. There was nothing that I had gotten. So, and so we walk in and they, and they said, all right, so you guys know what you're doing then, right? And I was like, I don't actually. What was their sides that were supposed to be sent out or anything? <laughs> and, and they go, no, 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 we're, we're just, we're just improving a scene. I was like, oh, okay. all right, sweet. So, but the casting agent starts talking to the girl as if they know each other and they're just chatting away and I'm just standing there. And so then finally they, they pull the camera out and they, and they looked at her and they said, okay, go ahead and say your name, um, say your agency, say your height, um, where you're located and your phone number. And I was like, wow, that's a lot. Okay. So I'm trying to remember all that stuff. So she says it. And they're like, okay, great. Thank you. You know, and then they come to me and they go, all right, just go ahead and say your name and your agency. And I was like, did you want any of the other information? And, and she said, no, it's fine. And I was like, oh, damn. Oh. <laughs> I was like, well, I didn't get this. And so I stand there and do it. And she goes, all right, cool. Um, here is a cup of cookie dough, Nestle cookie dough. You guys both just got home from work. Talk about your day. Oh, and here's, here's a spoon. You each have a spoon and you can share out of the, and in my head, I was like, has everybody been sharing out of this cookie dough thing? Cause there was already <laughs> like spoon scoops full or, you know, out of it. And I was like, Yikes. it was like warm and, and um, yeah. And I thought it went great. We went on for like, you know, I don't know, 10 minutes, like it was five minutes. And so they said cut and, uh, and the girl had said, uh, okay, so is there anything else that, uh, you know, you guys need from, from me at least? And, and, and they had said, um, they're like, nope, nope, you did great. Everything was good. Um, we'll let you know, you know, if, if we need you and blah, blah, blah. And I was, and I was like, all right. And so she goes to walk out and I said, is there anything else you guys need from me? And they said, no, you're fine. Thank you for coming in. I was like, damn. <laughs> so I walked out, oh. never heard anything, drove seven hours for for literally, I was there for 15 minutes, you, like 15 minutes. That's it. Yeah. I have done that so many times. And it's like, at this point, I'm like, is it even worth it anymore? You yeah. know, <laughs> like the older I get, I'm like seven hours round trip in one day. I've most likely missed work and missed a paycheck. I have paid for that gas in this day and age. It's insane. Oh my God. Um, yeah. Like, is it even worth it? 
And then you get that one chime and you book it and you are on set and you do get that fat paycheck and you're like, yeah, it was worth it. Okay. Yeah. You know, Yeah. but you're so right. That's so devastating. And it was funny because I knew the second they saw me, like they didn't hide it. They saw me and they were just like, all right. Yeah. Come on in. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, um, do you want me to just turn around and go home now? Like, uh, clearly I'm not getting this. So, but, but of course, like the competitive side of me is like, I'm going to win them over. That was my naive self. That was like some years ago where I was like, I, I'm not going to win them. Now I'm like, I'm not going to win them over at that point. I might as well just turn around and walk out. I'm not going to go. I'm like, there's no point. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah it's funny. What, what is, really what is, what is, what is, what is gas up there right now? Speaking um, of. but I filled up yesterday for five nineteen. Oh, five nineteen. Yeah. So you're in Arizona, right? Did I or New Mexico? Louisiana. Not close okay. at all, but it's okay. <laughs> I, I have not been keeping up with you at all. I could have swore you moved to the Southwest. Wow. No, I would have. No, no. I would have bet money on that. I, I, I almost moved to Texas. We all we almost moved um, to Texas and then we took a trip down to Texas, figured out that it was going to be much farther from her work than than we uh, had realized. And um, and also the areas that we were looking at just wasn't wasn't great. So um, we ended up swinging on over here to Louisiana. All right. Coming down to the bayou. What what is gas down there right now? Uh, I filled up the other day for, um, or no, we just filled up her car the other two days ago for four fourteen, which is sad that we're excited okay. about that. Isn't that sad that we're excited about four fourteen? Yes, Dude, it, it is. But uh, maybe maybe um, Louisiana's in the future for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Everyone, oh yeah. my god! But well, yeah. are you liking it down there? Yeah. 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 We do like it down here. Um, it's hot, but, uh, but it's good though. I mean, everybody here is so nice. Like everybody is yeah. so nice. Yeah. The South does is different. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, like every person that we've talked to has been so kind to us. And, um, and one other thing that I don't really see ever is this, or I just, just staring at their phones, not like everybody's like talks to each other and oh, yeah. like it's like socializes, like it's nice. Um, that does sound nice. Yeah. And the sweet tea <laughs> down here. Whew, wow. Yeah. Here it's diabetes worthy. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, no, we do like it here a lot. Um, you know, she, uh, she's working at a chimpanzee sanctuary and she's, she's one of the caregivers at a chimp at a chimpanzee sanctuary. Yeah. And she's killing it. Um, that's beautiful. Yeah. She's, and, and the place is really cool too. And it's not like, it's not like a, like, it's not open to the public. They have maybe four days a year where the public can come and, and check out all the chimps. But, um, but yeah, it's just a, it's a really cool place and she's learning so much and, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm really proud of her and I'm really excited for her because this is a huge opportunity for her. So, um, yeah, no, so, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's, that's what we're, uh, that's what we're up to is living <laughs> down here in Louisiana, which I'll tell you what, never thought that I would ever be here in Louisiana. You know, if, if you would have asked me five years ago, Hey, are you going to move to Louisiana? I would have been like, what? What is even, I don't, what's in Louisiana except for New Orleans? I don't. Isn't that uh, funny? Yeah. Isn't that funny how life works? Oh, yeah. You just, you really never know what's going to happen despite all the plans you may have. You really never know. And it's funny because like both her, both her and I were talking just the other day that we both feel like that this is exactly where we're supposed to be right now. Like there's no, there's no like weird pit in your stomach of like, I don't know, or no, no uneasiness, this, like, I feel, this feels right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so yeah, we are, we That's, are very happy. So where, That's so where, in, where in Michigan are you at right now? So, um, at the beginning of the year, I just moved to Dearborn Heights. Okay. So I'm right outside of Detroit. I lived in Detroit last year and it was not my favorite experience. And my partner, Daniel and I found a house 
15 minutes outside of Detroit uh, that is a three bedroom house um, for less than what we were paying in the city. So yeah. Yes, <laughs> that's awesome. Well, I'm glad Which to hear. Just, I'm glad to hear you guys are doing well. Yeah, it's um, it's pretty neat, but it's also really got me spoiled. So in terms of like acting and film, I have recently just been coming up against this roadblock of like, I don't know, I recently heard the saying that when you're trying to achieve something, especially a career in acting or in film, um, every time that you level up, you need to look at the ceiling that you've just hit as the floor, which I just love that. And I think yeah. about that all the time. And so now I think I've hit a point where I, I've hit my ceiling and now it's my floor and I need to go up. And I don't think that I'm going to be able to achieve that in Michigan, um, which is devastating because I love Michigan. And mm. I recently last year, just like deeply fell in love with Northern Michigan. Mm. Um, and now having this so much space, we have a yard, a garage, three bedrooms, which I like, I haven't had this in my adult life, yeah. not since I left home. And to think about moving to New York where you have a matchbox or, LA where you can have slightly bigger than a matchbox, but you're going to be paying at least half of your salary or what you make at least just to yeah. survive or Atlanta, which is like, as I hear continuing to get more and more and more and more and more expensive. Um, it's just, it's hard. It's hard to justify like these creature comforts for, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. May I ask why do you feel you need to leave when Everything now is tape auditions, Zoom auditions. Um, there's not really many in-person auditions anymore. You know? I will tell you why. Um, I, I know, so correct me if I'm wrong, but you've had representation outside of Michigan for a while, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I remember you saying that you had representation in LA like years ago and me being mm -hmm. like, oh, wow, <laughs> this guy's legit, which I still feel. <laughs> No, 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but, thank but you. I will tell you last year I was working with and for a coach out in LA. Mm -hmm. Um, she was amazing. Um, if anybody is looking for a coach, Kaz Santana, line runner tapes, she's top notch. She's not paying me to say this, but she's incredible. Um, but at her school, she has a, um, she had a marketing professional named Jackie Osorio. And I took Jackie's class and during that class, she was talking about like materials and what you need um, in order to work out there. And so, um, yeah, so that's part number one. That's piece number one. I then, after I took that class, I booked a meeting with Erica Breen, who is located out of Atlanta. She does like most of the casting in the Southwest and um, talking about the rejection piece, I sent her all of my stuff. And she was like, Kelly, your clips are so interesting. Like you are a very interesting and talented actress. Your headshots are nothing I would ever choose. She was like, your headshots are so boring. And I was <gasps> like, great. I just spent way too much money on them. And she was like picking apart my headshots, which like, I don't even want to talk about how much money I spent because I'm frankly embarrassed. Yeah. Um, Cause, but I we've all been the there. Nine yeah. I, that I just, I, I never thought I'd be that person. <laughs> I never did, but mm -hmm. here we are. Um, but yeah, she just like picked them apart. And then she was like, you know, Callie, we need you down here. We need good actors like you down here. So come on. So I was like, okay, maybe I try. Cause I was in Atlanta for about six months um, in 2019. And I came back because I, lots of reasons why I came back, but I came back. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, she was just like, we need you down here. And then recently I, um, I had a connection with an agent who she is located in Nashville, but she works, um, she covers all of the Southwest. And I've been, I'd like know a lot of her actors and I followed her roster and her pretty closely. And I was like, this, this is the type of person I want to work with. She hypes up her actors, her actors adore her. You're not just another number. Like she's everything I've ever been wanting. Mm. So I asked to be put in touch with her and my connect put me in touch with her. And her reaction was like, oh my gosh, Callie, you are so talented. I would love to work with you. Are you in the Southwest? And I was like, no, but I love to travel. I would easily be there. And she was like, 
unfortunately I am unable to represent you because you are not in this market. And then she gave me like paragraphs reasonings why she can't represent an actor who is like not in that region. So I just, I would say I have heard of maybe two actors outside of yourself um, who have gotten like Michigan actors who have successfully gotten representation outside of Michigan and who have actually had like a great relationship with their reps and like their reps know how to use them. So I don't know if you've experienced something different um, and it mm. sounds like you probably have, but like, this is just what I have. Yeah. Um, one thing that I have found about Atlanta is take, okay. Take, take a look at Marvel. Right. right. They film all of their stuff in Atlanta, all of it for the most part. Um, and all of their big roles are cast out of LA and New York. Right. The smaller roles, which, which I would still, I'll take a small role in a Marvel movie. I don't care. But, um, but all of their, all of the small roles are the ones that are cast out of Atlanta because of the right. tax credit. Um, in terms of LA, uh, to me, it's just too expensive. I just, it's just too expensive and nobody films in LA much anymore. Um, unless it's like at the studios. Um, but like, so, so my acting teacher, his, his name is Chris Holder. Uh, he teaches out of Ivana Chubbuck's studio in, okay. in LA, um, and he's amazing as well. Um, he's told me, he said, so when are you moving out here? And I said, Chris, be honest. I said, do I really need to be out there right now? Do I really need to be? And he said, okay, because because I asked him, I said, are auditions in person? No, not yet. I'm like, not yet. Okay, but are they, do you think they're ever really going to be? Because I got a message from my, my agent saying that the Zoom auditions and the tape auditions, those are here to stay. Yeah, I've heard that as well. Um, and so, I mean, honestly, I think, I think really the, the reasoning, for, at least from my opinion, granted, this, this agent that you talk to, I mean, I'm sure, you know, she's more in touch or more in tune than I am, but because um, she deals with it every single day. But, um, that's probably for tax credit reasons. She probably represents people, actors who um, are residents of those states because that assists the tax credit for the film. Yeah. Um, so I, mean, I will say one of the reasons that she like typed out for me was that mm -hmm. she gets casting calls regularly, regularly that say, do not send this to actors in LA or New York and do not send this to actors who are outside of a 500 mile range. Hmm. So, that's cool. That's cool. Well, that's good. And and you said she represents Southwest or Southeast region. Um, Southeast. If I said Southwest, I was not oh, okay. correct. Yeah, she well, does like most of the Southeast, which is crazy because I, if she's like outside of um, Nashville, I am seventy three miles outside of that five hundred mile range. <laughs> Just like, dang. Oh, heartbreaking. Wow. So you said wait. So she's she doesn't cast anybody that's out of the 500 mile range from Nashville. Um, so she just said outside of the Southeast. Oh, okay. So, so what is that? Michigan include, does not. You know? yeah, yeah. 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 Michigan's a little far, but <laughs> yeah. Um, well, Hey, I, you know, honestly, like the way for, from what I've been told. So I was told by my cousin, Michael John, um, who's been in the business for years and years and years, he has always told me, he said, go out and make your own stuff. Cause if you sit around and if you wait on the business, it'll leave you, it'll leave you hanging every time. Absolutely. Um, and you're really, and you're really, <laughs> and you're really good at making your own stuff. So keep doing that. In my opinion, keep, keep, keep doing that stuff because you make some good stuff and you, oh. you, you're, you're a good creator too. So, um, so don't cut yourself short, but um, can we, can you tell me, tell me a time where you tried something failed like miserably, but then 
learned then then but then you learned something from it where you were able to come to the realization of if i didn't have that failure i can't i couldn't be where i'm at right now oh god i think that the easiest way to answer that and the first thing that comes to my mind is just the entire experience of electron blade mm. i mean i as I kind of stated before, there's just like a lot of regret and hurt around that experience. Um, and a lot of like, I could have done better things that like, I wish I would have known better because we had people there for 22 hours um, with no pay. And like, if I experienced that now in my career, I would have lost my mind. Like I would have gone insane. And I think back on that. And that's something that just like, I cannot believe that I did that. I like, I'm just, but everybody there was there because of the material and the level of dedication that we could all see coming from you guys and how kind you guys are. Like you guys are good people. So, Thank you know, you so like, so like to, like, to me, like, like you're right in the sense of, you know, when every time you level up, the ceiling that you had should now be your floor. Like, I don't, I don't really, I don't do stuff for free anymore because I've, yeah. I've done enough of that. Right. Yes. Um, and, but that was an experience that like, 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 like if you called me right now and said, Hey, we want to shoot electron blade and actually do it again. Um, but I can't pay you. I would do it. That's how fun that content was and, and how fun it was working with all of you. So, oh. so don't, don't beat yourself up over that. And also everybody at that point, like <laughs> everybody was just happy to work. You know what I mean? So that's, that's kind of where everybody was at. I feel like at that point. So don't worry about that. I so appreciate you saying that for like a million and a half reasons. I really do. I, I can't say that I, I know that not everybody felt that way. We had a, a few actors who had some unkind things to say, which is something that like mm. I have taken very seriously. And I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not really gonna go into it. I just, there were some people who um, were upset with contracts, but never discussed contracts with us. Like, and, and these are all things that I heard through the grapevine. Um, mm. I know that one of the actors had gone around saying a lot of really unkind things about not getting paid or getting paid less than other actors, but we were never talked to about it. Like it was never brought to our attention or anything like that. This, yeah. um, they had, and they said a lot of unkind things like on social media, like even going so far as to like leave IMDb reviews. Um, <laughs> I, and I, I, I don't, Jeez. I, 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 on, I, I can reflect I reflect enough to know where this person was coming from and I can like admit fault in the places that I um, that I am at fault. And also it, it can't be fixed unless it's a direct conversation, which yeah. is I, I, I feel feel like I've grown a lot and I feel like if you have something to say or something about me to say, please talk to me about it. I'm, I'm here to listen and try to fix it. I'm not going to fight you. Um, but Anyway, all of that to say, like, to answer your original question, yeah, Electron Blade was that experience that without it, I, there's no way I would be where I was at because Tommy and I putting out that casting call introduced me to more than half of the network of amazing actors that I know of now. Um, it put me in contact with um, some people, some actors that became my mentors that kind of like hooked me up with the I group and like, I don't want to say trained me, but like taught me about the business. So I could like, if I had questions, I had someone to go to, um, it though, it can be counted as a failure. It was like an integral part of my process as a creator. Um, so like I said, there's still, there's like regret and sadness around it. There's still a lot to like heal around that situation, but, um, it was definitely like necessary. Yeah. So necessary for my growth as an artist and as a human. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yes, it 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 a hundred percent does. And and I'm glad you see it that way. Um well that's good. That's good. I'm I I always like um I always like hearing those kinds of stories of, you know, well, this wasn't necessarily a failure, it was the best learning experience I've had, you know, or the like like that kind of a thing. Um 
And also to bounce back real quick, because because my brain goes 100 miles an hour in different places all the time. Um, headshots, Ian McLaren out of Chicago does okay. some freaking killer headshots. I um, will look to that. <laughs> yes, look, look, look at his website or, or at least his Facebook or his Instagram. Um, and if you're if you're worried about like, quote unquote, boring headshots, um, it's impossible to have boring headshots with his work. Like it's so good. Okay. So look, look, yeah, that that's where I, that's where I got my last headshots. And it was a great experience. It's a great experience. Good um, to know. Thank you. You're welcome. So what's your biggest pet peeve? Just in general. What is my biggest pet peeve? Um, in general, not necessarily film related. No, yeah, no, just in life, in life in general. That's a very good question. One of mine is when people say milk and pillow. <laughs> There's no E in either of those. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so that uh, <laughs> reminds me. Um, this is a very like Michigan specific. I don't know if it's Midwest, but very Michigan specific thing. We like to add S's onto things where S doesn't exist. Myers, so Myers Targets, <laughs> Kroger's. Uh, even so far as um, I dealt with Lyme disease for a while, uh, and everyone called it Lyme's disease. Like, I even had <laughs> doctors write on doctor's notes Lyme's disease. Like, no, <laughs> it is what it is. It, yeah. There's no S. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I don't know. Um, okay. Honestly, something that's being pretty pet peevey of me recently that's just been bothering me, and I don't necessarily want to go here, but I'm going to go here for a second. I have been not necessarily following all of the crap with everything that's been going on with Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, right? Um, oh, but, oh you've been you've been following every single second of it. <laughs> Don't even act like you have it. You have. I, I, OK, so I, I can't say every single second, but I've been following along enough to know that everybody's opinions on this just like shouldn't matter. Like this is two people who are in an extremely horrible situation, like yeah. both of them. And yeah. so when I see people like commenting, like, you know, you were in the room. You know, yeah. you know what Johnny did. You know what Amber did because you were in the room. Yeah. But you weren't. You were literally just a bystander at home. I'm like, okay. What do they, what do they say? Opinions are like assholes. Everyone's got one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the unfortunate thing is, is that, a, a, that like opinions harm. Yeah, they do. Especially when you're like loud about them. Yeah. I don't know. I just, yeah. that's just been pretty pet peevey lately. Yeah, no, no, I get that. Like social media in, in general, it's just like a pet peeve of mine. If it, if it wasn't, if I didn't need social media from like promotion stuff, then I wouldn't have it really. It's just, it's, so social media has become such a, in my opinion, has become such a, like a cancer, but that's a whole nother discussion for a whole nother day. I feel, um, yeah. if you could not go anywhere in the world, where would you not want to go and why? All right. Uh, I I don't know what your audience base is. I don't want to offend. All, it's all no. It's all it's all over. I have I have like two or three listeners at kind of like in everywhere, but only like two or three, so it's fine. <laughs> okay, and I say this. Um, I don't I don't ever want this to be used against me. But I'm mm -hmm. extremely arachnophobic, extremely. Okay. I, I do not like spiders. So the first thing that comes to my mind is I don't want to go to Australia. And that's I don't like, really that's like that's like my biggest audience. Come on. Now I got to <laughs> cut that out. No, guys. I'm kidding. It's not. It's uh, not. There's nothing wrong with you. <laughs> it's not. I'm kidding. No, it's like just your wildlife. In, yeah. Like everything in Australia could kill you. I feel like. Well, when you have a. Uh, arachnids that are like this big like yeah. massive i don't want any part in that like no thank you yeah. I, I just so um that or like the deserts i um understandable i don't love no 
they have they have a big uh a big lack of water problem you know <sighs> yeah that gets difficult but anyhow well <clears throat> callie before we get going um I like to try and end my shows with uh, a little segment called The Goods. Been doing this for a while, and um, and it's fun. It's fun to hear the answers of, of uh, or at least what comes to mind of, of who I have on. So uh, let's get to it, shall we? All right, let's do it. Numero uno, top five actors in your opinion of all time. Oh God! Like, okay. Like 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 your top five. I'm sorry, not like the Mount Rushmore, but your top five actors of all. My time. top five. Okay. Um, Bob Odenkirk. Mm, wow. Starting so off incredible. with a wild card. I love Bob Odenkirk, but all right, go Bob ahead. Bob Odenkirk, amazing. Um. Why can't I remember his name right now? He's uh, Dennis on It's Always Sunny. Glenn Howerton. Mm. Glenn Howerton. Incredible actor. They're all incredible actors. He is phenomenal. Um, why can't I remember her name? I have it written down. Literally look at it every day. Um, she plays Poussey on um, Orange is the New Black. And she is oh. on The Night's Tale. Um, uh, she plays Moira. I know who you're talking about. Yes, I know who you're talking about. Dang it. Okay. I, I literally have her name written on my desk. I have on my desk a list of actresses that I like to emulate. Um, Sarah Wayne Callies, I think, is amazing. She is in The Walking Dead and on Colony. She played Lori on Walking Dead. Oh, okay. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. And then number five, um, Will Arnett. Wow. That is a <laughs> wild list. That's a wild list. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Good. I like that list. That's a good one. Will Arnett's great. Have Incredible. you listened? Have you listened to the Smart List podcast? I have heard. So my partner Daniel is uh, a comedian. Like his thing is he wants to do comedy. Mm -hmm. Um, and so he has listened to that quite a bit. I have heard bits and pieces of it, um, but never in any depth. It's a great podcast. It's a really no, funny podcast. Yeah. And Will Arnett's great in it. Okay. Favorite animal in the world? Cats. <laughs> Little cats, big cats, all cats. I have a passion for cats. Thought we were friends, but okay. Guess, guess, uh, guess not. I have nothing against any no, other animals. I'm kidding. I'm just allergic <laughs> to cats. So it's, you know. Oh, God. Why. Yeah. I'm so sorry. No, it's but all right. I have had... A, f a slew of health issues over the course of my life, but I have never been allergic to an animal. And like, please, I'm going to knock on wood. I've never been allergic to an animal. Um, I totally thought you then, were just reaching over to grab your cat and pull it into the frame. <laughs> it is truly shocking. I have, So I'm in my studio or like my soft tape studio and I have my lights on and it literally every time I'm in here, I have one of my cats that come in and wants to audition for me. It is like without fail. As soon as I slate, he comes in and meows. I, I awesome. can't explain it. It's it's incredible. <laughs> Fruits or vegetables? Vegetables. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Fav favorite place to go and unwind? Hmm. Northern Michigan. Any yeah. place? Any, any place in Northern in Michigan particular? specifically? Yeah. Oh. Um. If I have the opportunity, I'm probably not going to be choosy. If somebody was like, hey, do you want to go to insert city here that is four hours from where you are north? I'm going to be like, yes. Um, <laughs> but if I had to choose, um, my dad runs a rental, like a cabin rental in Kalkaska, Michigan, um, mm. that I just like, that I get to use whenever it's not being rented. And so I guess I'll say Kalkaska, which is also 40 minutes from Traverse City. So just like that region is... <sighs> So, so gorgeous. It's so gorgeous up there. Unreal. Now, how do you stay finally? How do you stay grounded? I don't. 
<laughs> um, <laughs> I'm constantly unhinged. <laughs> Literally. Um, no, I, um, how do I stay grounded? That's a, that's a very good question. Um, I do a lot to, um, to just like be a person. Um, I do a lot with nutrition and that like helps so much. I take supplements all the time and try to eat well. And that like really curbs anxiety. Um, I exercise and I ride my bike that helps. Um, and also if I'm just feeling like a real schlup or like, I really can't do anything. Have you ever had those days where it's just like, nothing's going right. You feel so overwhelmed, whether it's from like your own personal life or like everything that's happening in the world that we hear about all the time. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I will play candy crush on my phone. And that just kind of like, everyone's got their vice. Literally. (laughs) (laughs) I play 2048 on my phone. Do you remember that game? I do. I do. Is it sad to say that I got up to 8,000? Was it 891 or whatever it is? No. Is that, is that sad to say? Yeah, I got up That's to that amazing. tile. Do you know how long that took? I, it was like an hour. I played that game for three months and I couldn't even get 2048. So <laughs> <laughs> to me, it's a real feat. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's all right. Not everybody can be the best. Anyway, um, so... <laughs> So Callie, thank you very much for being on the show. It was great to see you. It was great to talk with you. And, um, and yeah, I wish nothing but the best for you and your career. Um, you've always been incredibly kind and, uh, yeah, you're one of the good ones, kid. Thank you, Patrick. And likewise, no, I appreciate it. I I don't know. I'm a little, I'm a little weird myself. So that's all right. Um, but I appreciate that. I think you're one of the good ones and I, I'm going to just like share with you something that's like slightly personal, but pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm weird. I have a list on my phone of actors that I would like to work with again. And you are number one on that list. Um, and I, again, I'm not just saying that to like Thank kiss you. ass or like butter you up or anything, but I just yeah. like, I ongoing have a list of like, Oh, I really enjoyed this person. I would like to work with them again. Patrick Hardy is number one. Oh man. Well, thank you very much. I, I, I do appreciate much. that. And, uh, and, and hopefully one day it will. It'll yeah. Happen. It'll happen. Yeah. One day. If we set the intention, it'll happen. Yes, it will. Well, thank you, Callie. And is there anybody or uh, you have the floor to, is there, where can people find you? Where can people keep up with what you're doing? And do you have anything coming out that you want to promote? Um, yeah. So you can, <clears throat> I, I mean, Instagram's usually like my biggest social media thing. Um, so I am just at Callie Bustle, my first and last name. Um, and something to promote. I, I just did a short film called Underneath Riverbend. Um, the team is a combo team from like New York and Dallas. Um, their production company is Three Old Cat. So they're fairly um, a newer production company. So they don't have like a whole lot of content out right now. But I... Uh, at the bottom of the first page of the script and I was like I have to freaking do this like this is such a good script this is so funny um and I got to the end of it and I was like there's no way I'm not doing this it is so good the writing was just phenomenal um and the writer is actually um my third cousin uh his name is Brennan Hershock it's kind of like it was like a, an interesting little family reunion he and I had like not met since we were like three um oh, wow. <laughs> but our, but his mom, who like kept up with me, was like, hey, you're going into film. Callie's in film. You guys should connect. And we've been trying to um, connect with each other for about two years. And then he was like, hey, I wrote this. You want to do it? And I was like, OK, let's see the script. And I saw the script and I was like, OK, let's do this. Um, so funny. that should be coming out in the next couple months, which you can keep an eye out for. That's awesome. Well, good for yeah. you. Good for you, Callie. Thank you. Thank and, you. Uh, but yeah. And again, I wish you the best of luck. And, uh, and thank you for coming out. Yeah, likewise, Patrick. Thank you for having me. All right, and that's all we got. Thank you very much, Callie, for being here. And thank you to all of you for listening and always uh, making sure to show some love. So, again, make sure to share this with your friends and uh, be on the lookout for the next episodes that are coming out. We will see you next week.